Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. The Great Debaters Contest 2016 registration is now open. Teachers or school administrations should register on www.greatdebaterscontest.com slash register. Welcome to the always boiling, always steaming melting pot for debate. This is the Great Debaters Contest. I'm Austin Yumbok, Nakuru Region. And I am Mariam Bashar. Today we have Wanjohi Mixed going versus Bahati Upper Hill School on a very controversial motion. Should Africa adopt the one child policy? Let's see how they handle this very sensitive topic. <laughs> Proposal number one, you have three minutes. A season when the leaves are growing sorghum, then a height of a toddling child, a child was born. She was to be named one boy after her grandmother, and indeed she was. With you, with you here is none other than Naomi Wamboy, fully armed to antagonize the motion. Africa should adopt a one-child policy. What do we mean by these terms adopt? This simply, the term adopt means this simply to start using a new or a different way of doing something. A one child, it's, the, it's an act of having or bearing one child, not more than one child. Policy, it's, these are a set of ideas or plans that is used as a basis of making decisions, especially in politics, economics, or business. And to my first points, on to my first point, one child policy reduces an, the problem of unemployment. This comes as we see one child, okay, when we have overpopulated country, uh, the rate of people will lack jobs. That means the one child policy will, lead, will reduce the rate of un unempro unemployment. There is political instability or poor leadership. Since uh, people, people are idle, politicians may use idle men to, to use them in terms of politics. As in they may take youths from one center to go and attack the other just in terms of politics. Like now in the post-election violence, what happened in 2007? And to my third point, there is good utilization of resources, whereby we see an over, uh, a good populated country, resources like land, they are well utilized. But where we have just one, uh, one when we have overpopulated country, people may tend to, to fight for the small facilities that are there. Another point, there are, there are no pressures on social amenities, e.g. Hospi example, hospitals and schools. So there is good efficiency when it comes to schools. Uh, where, okay, an example, where we have a class of students. One class has got 30 students, or another one has got 70 students. A teacher handling a class of 30 students will be able to, to cope with those students well that compared to the class with 70 students. That's all, thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes for your opening statements. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to oppose the motion. Africans should adopt the one-child policy. My name is Milanoi Sintame. What is this one-child policy that you're talking about? The one-child policy is an official program which was initiated in the late 1970s and early 80s by the government of China to limit the great majority of family units in the country to one child each and the main purpose was to reduce the growth rate of China's population. On my first point, we have culture. It is our culture as Africans to have many children. I would like to believe that we are all Africans, aren't we? Yes. We are proud Africans and we do not need to ape the white man's policy of having one child. The Chinese who implemented this policy of having one child are not Africans. And to enlighten you further, they, they, they are burning in the fire they lit themselves. The, on my second point, African tropical diseases. If you look at Africa, there are various diseases that sweep away the under five year old children, such that very few survive to olden age. For example, polio, malaria, cholera, 
What would happen if each and every one of us adopts the one child policy? Where will the next generation come from? How will our country continue to develop? This is not right. My third point, unused land. We have a lot of land left untouched. Who will put this land to beneficial use if we all choose to follow in the white man's footsteps and have one child? Remember, the Bible says to subdue the earth. God is the most supreme being. None is greater than he. So who are you to oppose him? In the novel, The River Between by Gugi Wathiongo, the character Chege advises his son Wayoki, Wayaki to follow the good ways of the whites, but not the vices. And the one child for policy is a vice according to Africans. I stand here with a lot of vigor and confidence, kindly asking the opposers to cross over and oppose the motion. Africans should adopt the one child policy. Thank you. We'll hear cross-examinations now. Proposers, you have three minutes. With you on stage is Lucy Wenjiru Mungai, proposing the motion that Africa should adopt one child policy. And what do we mean when we say there is so much idle land such that there are people who can, there are, there are less people to settle on them? My opposer just said that. And can I tell you that land is becoming minimal day in, day out because of overpopulation. Africans, we are getting over or many children, yet they all depend on the land that is there. Now tell me, where will they settle? Just imagine a case whereby I've got six children. Yeah, I mean six children. And I have only a half acre of land. Where will I take them? Where will I take them? My audience. She's not really being the way I think. Anyway, my first point, one child policy will help ease calamities like hunger. You all remember of the 2011 Kenyans for Kenya initiative, don't you? It was there and we were all donating food to our friends in the northern Kenya. Had there been less people, I believe the irrigation schemes there will be able to cater for their food all over there. But with so many children, how could they? How could they keep food even in times of drought? No food for them. One child policy will help, in, will help curb the emigration rates in search of greener pastures. What do I mean by this? So many youths are relocating from their country, moving on to other countries just in search of jobs. My people, if there were less children in Kenya, if there were less children in Africa, then I believe the opportunities here will be enough for all of us. But people, our youths mostly, are all moving to countries like Dubai, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, all in search of greener pastures. Don't you think if we were less, we would be able to fit in the, all the projects that are here? Then, to my third point, the government will be able to undertake development projects in, the, in our continent. Let's take these projects. Health, health pro projects, giving an example. They will be efficient. Why? There are no people, there are no many people. Therefore, these resources will, will be much improved and we'll be having facilities like those of treating cancer, those of treating kidney diseases, all in, in our continent. But now with the many people, how then can we be able to cater for their needs, yet we still have, yet we still need all these other facilities? My people, let's all come out clearly. Let's reason it out. What is the benefit of having so many children, yet you can't be able to raise them up? Thank you. Position, you have three minutes for your cross-examination. First, land is in abundant, just that. Most of the Africans, they, they use themselves to own big, but not to help each other. Land is lying somewhere because of one child. They are giving it to one child, in which that child cannot maintain. Is Sylvia Nasarian on stage? Africans to adapt the one child policy. My first point is about health. God gave almost all the women the ability to give birth. 
And if you want us to adapt the policy now, we will have to use another measure. We will have to take another measure. That is family planning. For example, me, being one of the best in Bahati Upper Hill as, they, as in chemistry and biology, I've been doing hard, not sleeping, to look and search, do research on cancer cure. That's what everybody here is now trying to fight against. And now, if only you know, how can you use something that you are being told that this thing will lead to cancer? Why should you use it? And by the way, God is the supreme. If you are here and you think that by giving one birth to one child will be the better, I'm very sorry, that is not in Africa. Just as the Swahili go saying goes, Mwachamila ni mtumwa. All of you are Africans. And if you are not an African, then you are in Africa and either by registration. And so when you go to Rome, do what the Romans do. My second point is still on health. There has developed the Zika and the microcephalus disease in a state where women give birth to children with small heads. Imagine you have that one child, a child that you see is abnormal, health abnormal. Will you just stand there, sit there, see your child dying? No, and by the way, just take a look at the river and the source by Margaret Agola. If for instance, a coco gave birth to only one child, and when will they follow the brother, the younger brother saw it, I will not do as my brother did and he died, but I will take another step. So, socialization. We have to, the child in that family, the children in that family will know this is good because I see my brother not doing it. This is bad because I see my sister doing it. And so what? How, why should I be one? Go somewhere and do something, but because I don't have anybody to help me in the house. Socialization, self-centered. You'll know how to, the child can become so self-centered because he or she thinks of mine and mine alone. But when having many children in the house, the child will know that this is bad and this is good. Responsibility in parents. The ch most of the parents leave their children under maids. But when you're having many children, you have to come home and take care of the children. And by the way, the African says that, says that I am because we are. And because we are, therefore I am. Thank you. The Great Debaters Contest 2016 registration is now open. Teachers or school administrations should register on www.greatdebaterscontest.com slash register. The Great Debaters Contest 2016 registration is now open. Teachers or school administrations should register on www.greatdebaterscontest.com slash register. The proposers have been asked uh, if we adopt a one-child policy, what happens in the, event, in the event that twins are born? And the opposition have been challenged to give facts that prove that family planning methods cause cancer. We'll have them respond. Proposal number three, you have three minutes. One morning in the smoky heart of Amomboi, the wife, the first wife of the great farmer, Kinyanjui, a baby was born. And the baby is Kinyanjui. But later my father realized that it would be better if you could give me another name, which means Hosea, or goes by the name Hosea. Don't think of what Hosea means in the Bible. Quarrel end but words spoken never end to my quest i want to answer my fellow there who has just asked that what will happen when for example a woman gets a twin no the government has some feelings or government is made up of people in fact they are ex exceptionals where they are twins so that the government may provide for the twins other than killing because even all of us are are human beings who have even emotions. I want also to object to my fellow opposer who said that 
one child, many child will lead, one child will not lead to better utilization of resources. For example, is there any need to give as many children land so as to exploit it than to give only one child who will, who will use properly that land? I think you must think extra. To my point is that one child policy is a, will improve a place or will give a room of education society, of good education. For example, when you have a lot of children to educate and yet you don't have money, what do you do? You find that, for example, the firstborn has to take all that role to, edu to leave school and educate those are, who are behind. But what about in a country like China? Because of the one policy, the education society just grew rapidly. Another thing is, one child policy leads to economic ramification and environmental impact positively. For example, because of the high dependency ratio in China, because of the high dependency ratio in countries where people prefer white collar jobs than blue collar jobs, you find that many people will tend to do their white collar jobs, thus making the blue collar jobs to have no anyone interested, thus leading to the high dependency ratio, which in actually in Africa, we don't want. The third point is that the policy will reduce congestion in hospital. What about right now? There are many people in hospitals where the, so the resources in hospital are very limited. But when we adopt a one-child policy, the resources that are there will be utilized maximally. So in conclusion, in order to curb problems, like choosing labor, like choosing white collar jobs other than blue collar jobs, making other industries be more degraded than others, and promote room for inventions and innovations, high education rates, we must adopt a one-child policy. Opposition, you have three minutes to respond. My name is Emiliwe Weremo from Bati Upper Hill. First, I would like to answer the question that was posed to us by our friend there. You said that you should prove, yeah? So, it has not yet been fully proven. But one thing I'm sure, chemicals are harmful to our bodies. So it alters with our body functions. Yes, it's not a must for you to, cons to, co to cause cancer, but it causes other problems. So my friend, it can alter with our body. I'd like to go to my first point, that is innovation. First, what is innovation? This is coming up with something new. If you have more children, if you have more children in a family, it's easier for us to share ideas. E.g., a good example is the Moipoi family. There are four sisters. As compared, maybe you place one person here and the four of them there. I believe the four of them can bring up a more melodious song as compared to that one person. So with that, they can share ideas. They use different uh, instruments that bringing up something good and something sweet. Security. It is secure to have one child simply because maybe something comes up, e.g. a disease, or any other thing that can cause death, then what will you do? If you have that one child, where will you get the other? Maybe you're in a point that you can't give more children. You can't give birth to more children. What will happen? Also, revenues. In a large population, then it will be easier for us, for the, for the government to sustain us, simply because the more population, the higher the uh, the ability for us to give more money to the government. And also I believe unity is strength. When we are united, yeah, I believe none of us uh, um, in this place, the debaters, I, I believe that only if one person was to come here, they wouldn't have done all this job. There are many right now. So unity is strength. So my fellow colleagues, I believe in, in our culture, we should, our culture states that Many children gives wealth. That is our culture, and we cannot avoid it. So I believe by having many children, it is more of benefit to our lives than of disadvantage. Also, many people say that employment is something that 
are saying that if you have more population, employment also will be rare. My question is, yes, we have a smaller population and maybe we want to do something called engineering. Not everyone is perfect in engineering. The more, the more we are, the more we are capable of bringing up different ideas and different things. So please, let's stop that policy that came from I don't know where and let's focus on our culture because we are Africans. Thank you. Closing submissions now. Proposes you have a minute. We are seeing the future of African countries. They say wise people work with the wise. Come on, my audience. Are we still in the dark? Where in the past people used to have so many children all in the name of prestige and, re and, re and wealth? Come on. Let us all see our destiny. Wise people store up knowledge while fools invite ruins. Do we want to, to, to see the ruin of our continent? Whoever sat down and thought of this motion must have seen smoke somewhere. And where there is smoke, indeed there is fire. He saw fire burning in Africa, and that is why he came up with this motion. Come on, let's come together. An eye for an eye will only make the whole world blind. Do we, do we want blindness in our continent? Charity begins at home. Join us and let's be the first to start. Thank you. Opposition, you have a minute as well. African culture is much admired by the rest of the world. And we are proud enough not to feel as if we need to ape other people's culture. Excuse me, opposer. Uh, uh, for saying that a larger population, they will struggle. As for me, we are 12 back home. Six boys, six girls. And my parents have been able to provide for us. My fellow proposers have given us various reasons as to why we should not adapt to, we should adapt to the one child, we should not adapt to the one child policy. For example, inventions and innovations. A larger population is very much likely to invent more things as compared to a smaller population. Culture, no matter how hard to, you try to deny it, we are Africans and Africans have a rich culture and they believe in having large families. For example, a cuckoo danger. Now that is a real African. To sum it all up, as my fellow opponent just said, as my fellow opponent just said, I am because we are, and because we are, therefore I am. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll just address Bahati Upper Hill girls. I want to say that you had good points, but the problem is some of them were stray arguments. You know, uh, if you only sift through your arguments, pick only what is relevant and leave out what is not relevant. So many issues were raised, but at the end of the day, I asked myself, you know, when you do not convince someone whether to go this way or that way, then it means that uh, there's a problem with the debate. Good speakers, good voices. But I repeat what I said. There is a problem with the argument that we are building. Why should we not adopt this particular policy? I expect some good argument. We should not adopt it because of this. When you bring in the issue of land again, we have a lot of unused land. I, I have my own question marks on my sheet. I mean, uh, what does that therefore point us to? It's difficult to prove. In a sense, it was a bit of a fair presentation because there were a lot of questions that were not answered and we took some points that were a little bit difficult to explain, especially when you talk about an African culture and therefore build an argument around it. So it was a fair presentation, but a good attempt. Naomi, I love the aspect of introduction of efficiency and all that. Uh, of course, it was cross-examined, but I think you tried to start your team very well and give out the submissions. You know, just show us how bad the situation is. Show us how you can go to a family where there is one man with 12 kids and he cannot even feed them. They can't go to school. He can buy a uniform and all those kind of things. You okay? And show us that we really need to, first of all, get back to ourselves and maybe have one child, like China did because of their own reasons. I think that would have been better. So there was be a, way, a better way of persuading us because this is a new phenomenon that we would have really thought about if you brought it out well. Lucy, fair cross-examination, good submissions, but as I said, there was that point that I really wanted you to cross-examine. Jose, 
You have a very good voice. You have a presence. I can feel you when you come to the stage. However, I thought you evaded the answer to the question that was asked. I, I, I would call it evading, okay? Uh, so keep that element of that confidence, okay? And then work on content. Then you can make a great debater. But I think you did fairly well and all the best. The numbers are in. Wanjo, he mixed. You have 60%. Please give them a round of applause. Bahati Upper Hill girls, you have 67%, making you the winners for this debate. Congratulations to the two teams for a spirited fight. And we, uh, we thank you, members of the audience, for your attention. And urge you to follow us on social media, especially Twitter, at Great Debaters EA. Same to you, all viewers. Keep, stay tuned, sorry. I'm Austin Yambok. And I am Mariam Bashar. We'll catch you next time. The Great Debaters Contest 2016 registration is now open. Teachers or school administrations should register on www.greatdebaterscontest.com slash register. Contest was brought to you by Safaricom Mpesa.